This is your broken news. You're looking at me weird. Your shirt reminds me of Where's Waldo. I, I do kind of feel like Where's Waldo. But you're okay. definitely just a decoy on the page made to look like Waldo. Yeah, I don't to have, deceive the eye. I don't have glasses. Or, or the hat. No. Hello everyone and welcome to the 75th episode of The Broken News. I'm Justin Harris. And I'm Cody Best. And it's a beautiful day in Sanders County, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes it is. And of course we are looking to make your day a bit brighter by bringing you some important and interesting stories. Such as coverage of last weekend's Big Blow Up 1910 Fire commemoration. And we got some complaints about our Shakespearean acting on last week's show. So this week, we'll be bringing you some sights and sounds from last Friday's Montana Shakespeare in the Parks performance of Julius Caesar at the Sanders County Fairgrounds in Plains. And we'll take you to the Falls Motel, where the Sanders County Community Development Corporation is bestowing an award the likes of which have not yet been seen in Sanders County. And of course, with all that, we'll be bringing you your weather with Sanders County's very own Conrad Jenkins. Well, let's get to some news, shall we? We shall. Well, there was a bear in town. That's not news, is it? I mean, well, it is when the uh, it is when the bear's head is twenty five feet in diameter. That is a big headed bear. Yes, yes, it is. The west lot of the Falls Motel was the location of a special visit from a special bear to further promote fire safety during the weekend. The region commemorated the nineteen ten big burn. Smokey the bear made a special appearance. You know, I hear public education is important to the prevention of forest fires. Oh, really? Where'd you hear that? Um, actually, it was in a press release that Katrina and Mark, the owners of the Falls Motel, sent us. Uh, they were the sponsor of Smokey's visit to town, so... And, and they said that? Uh, no. Actually, uh, John Hamilton of the U.S. Forest Service did. He's Smokey the Bear's local PR guy. Oh, does Smokey the Bear do birthday parties? Uh... Not, not that I know of. Oh, okay. But he does do free to the public events. And the United States Forest Service office gave away stickers, pencils, pins, books, and bookmarks, all containing the only you can prevent wildfire slogan. Smokey the Bear gave high fives as well as hugs, and the kids got to see two Smokey inflatables and even practiced putting out a pretend grass fire. All right, that was a good time. And Conrad seemed to like it, too. For more information about fire safety, you can contact John Hamilton at 826-4345 or go to www.fs.fed.us. And speaking of fires, there was a great historical reading of the life and times of Lily, one of the last 1910 fire survivors who passed away earlier this year. In this reading at the Thompson Falls Public Library last Friday, Lily was played by Janice Wiswell. There were relatives of Lily in attendance and not an open seat in the house. Listen as Janice recounts Lily's memories of the fire. Let me introduce myself. I'm Lily Cunningham Obi. That's Lily with one L. I guess my real name is Lillian, but I've always preferred Lily. I used to live in this area too. But it seems like a hundred years ago. <laughs> it was a hundred years ago. Let me tell my story. They say I'm the lone survivor of the 1910 fire. Well, I don't know about that. I do know we did survive the big blow-up. It was terrible. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Although they were hard, sad times, I'll be the first to say I had a happy family home and lived in a community of good, hard-working people. I was born February the 23rd, 1907. Oh, it's so good to be back. My parents, John and Lily and Cunningham, lived in White Pine. You know where White Pine is? You couldn't tell it now, but it used to be a thriving community with a railroad station, mercantile, school, and post office. Now there's just a church. After I was born, my father accepted a job as an assayer. 
We lived in a cabin located between the White Pine Church and the railroad station. Anyway, I joined Rose, George, and Helen. Later, our family grew and my half-brother Leo came to live with us. And I got another sister when Nina was born. Ma and Pa decided to homestead on Little Beaver Creek, where that pond is. My dearest and longest friends live on either side of me. Angie Meadows, Maggie Anderson, and Judd Perkins. Why, we remain friends throughout our lives. Like that saying, make new friends, but keep the old, for one is silver and the other is gold. Anyway, Ma and Pa built a cabin for us to live in, and he began to farm. We had chickens, pigs, and cows. Ma kept such a large garden. She really had a green thumb. I think she grew everything. There was always plenty to eat. Plans were made to build us a bigger house. With six children, we needed it. The lumber was cut and stacked, ready to go. It smelled so pretty and looked so nice, we could hardly wait. That was the summer to remember. I was three and a half years old in 1910. And something happened that I've never forgotten all of these years. The 1910 fire, or as it is sometimes called, the big blow up. And blow up she did. When the forest fires roared through the mountains and valleys, homesteaders like we were had to face a heart wrenching decision. Do we fight or flight? Should we they stand their ground? fight with the hopes they could save their homes and belongings or take what they could carry and flee for safety. Let's think about it for a moment. What would you do? Knowing whatever course you chose, it was certain to bring a major a heartbreak. Well, this is what Ma and Pa did. When word came of the approaching fire, Sheriff Joe Hartman, you know him? Well, if not, just go over to the museum. It's just a few blocks away. Anyway, go down there and I'll tell you all about Sheriff Park. He was our neighbor to the south. Anyway, Mr. Hartman said for us that if our family brought our higher men and helped them save their place, they would help us rebuild after the fire. We gathered up a lot of our valuables and put them in an underground root cell. The stock was turned out to fend for itself. Then Pa loaded the wagon and headed for the Hartmans. Ma and us kids headed up to the Hartmans on the trail. We children were all in the house together where it was safe. I don't recall being frightened. As my Ma was close by and we were inside, my sister Helen used to talk about the fire quite a bit. She was about six and could remember when the flames came over the mountain top in the middle of the night. The fire, the flames shot up so high that the trees were illuminated below. I might not be able to recall everything, but I distinctly remember big orange balls of fire coming over the hill. It was real pretty to a three-year-old. <laughs> That was really neat. That it was. And the rest of her life story was just as entertaining and interesting.